Saffy Sprocket posted some electric content. <laughs> Bikers grumbled far and wide. Saffy took all your complaints and decided to complain to Ellis the V guy. <laughs> hey Sprocketeers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Saffy Sprocket and today we are on the Cadam Sound and Motorcycle Live in Birmingham NEC. Now I am joined today with Ellis. Ellis, would you like to tell my viewers a little bit about what you do? Because we're going to have completely different audiences. So. Yep, my name is Ellis Fizia. I'm a 20 year old professional electric racing driver. So I started my career uh, in Rotax's electric karting program, which was basically the testing ground for the exact powertrain that is in this bike. Um, over the years, jumped into car racing, everything from Formula 3 to touring cars to rally cross. Uh, pretty much driven every discipline that I could. And then uh, this past April is when they sent me over the poles for the first time and I got to jump on two wheels. That is amazing. Now, I happen to know that you are a huge EV advocate. That is your bread and butter. You love them. But recently I've been posting a lot of content online and a lot of people have a lot of criticisms today. So I thought, you know what? Let's fire them at you. Let's give it a shot. So the first criticism that a lot of people have come to me and said is that EV vehicles are only useful for city use. What do you have to say about that? I mean, so I live in Austin, Texas. I'm about 30 minutes outside of downtown. Uh, and Texas, as is known, everything's bigger in Texas. And that includes the highways. So um, I mean, the slowest that I ride this bike is around 60 to 70 miles an hour. And so even at that, uh, we're not losing too much range possibility. And I mean, it's got more than enough, you know, power and torque at every speed range that overtake cars, get in and out of bad situations safely. Uh, and I think it's one of those that, as long as you know the use case, obviously if you have a 500 mile road trip, that's a little bit outside of scope, but even outside, you know, going into the more suburban areas where you have those two lane roads and the speed limits are a little bit higher, it's been working awesome. Really? So the next criticism that I have that a lot of people say about electric vehicles is the fact that they are slower than combustion engines as well. I see that quite a lot online. So with being diplomatically within the speed limits of Austin, Texas's beautiful roads, uh, <laughs> I can confirm that this is about even with everything on the road when it came to the, you know, stoplight to stoplight. I have a ton of friends who ride everything from super sports to naked bikes that, you know, we like to have a little fun, we like to get on the throttle a little bit. Um, and with bikes, I mean, the zero to 60 time is 3.8 seconds. And so this is even, especially when it comes to compared to cars, this is the fastest thing on the road when I'm at a stoplight. And so I think I can confidently say a lot of the benefits, you know, especially when you look at some of the four cylinders where you have to rev them really high to get to that power man. Mm -hmm. Sure, it only has 47 horsepower on a bike that's a solid amount and it's instant right from the bottom end as soon as you twist the throttle all the power is there, no gears, so it just pulls and pulls and pulls. And, you know, the proof's there when I've done some real life results where it's yeah. neck and neck. So the, the next criticism that I hear a lot is that EV vehicles are far more dangerous than combustion engines. Now I know you're, you're a professional racer, so I mean, you're probably using them in really dangerous conditions, both combustion and EV, regardless of the vehicle. But a lot of people say that, you know, when it comes to EV vehicles and you come into a coll yeah. collision, you are, going to have far worse of results. I mean, I think safety is kind of a, uh, a far shot of a topic when we come to motorcycles, obviously. Uh, when it comes to EVs as a whole, I mean, from the racing side, they have a ton of heavy certifications for the batteries and making sure it's protected. Um, the beauty now is, especially with a bike like this, it's not any heavier than any road bikes, 176 kilos. So you're not stopping more weight. You're not putting more weight and energy into a collision. Um, and everything has been ruggedly tested when it comes to safety. And so uh, I think honestly, from a safety perspective, when you look at some of the older super sports and you know, anything like that, where there is no trash control, there is no ABS, something like this, where it's electric on electric, when it comes to the rider assist working with each yeah, other, yeah, yeah. they're so advanced, they're on point. They've saved me a ton of times when it comes to, you know, breaking on gravel or getting in the rain. So I think there's a lot of safety benefits of having electric powertrain. So the next criticism that I get, and this is this is one that always kind of makes me laugh, but it's electric vehicles aren't real vehicles, they're cheating. Okay. And that's why a lot of people are like, you know, you're not riding a real bike, it's a fake bike, it's an easy bike, it's something that you don't need a lot of skill to ride. But obviously as someone who is professionally racing EV vehicles, yeah. how do you find the difference between... I mean, I don't know. People always have the same, I feel like they have the same criticisms when it comes to, especially motorcycles, about traction control and ABS. Yes. In my opinion, anything that keeps help keep you upright is a benefit. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to the racing side, I mean, 
everyone's materials are equal, the cars are a lot closer in performance, so if anything, it takes more skill because there are no advantages from you know engine to engine or platform to platform, and I think it's one of those that, if you're gonna be scared of innovation, go for it, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't be upset when it leaves you in the dust. That is a very fair criticism, especially like because I don't know what the laws are like in America, but in the UK, for example, all bikes above a 125 now have to legally come with ABS. Yeah. So it's not it's not negotiable anymore. Yeah. That, that progression is happening whether people like it or not. And I think this is a great platform that, you know, listen, I live, I live in America where it is kind of a free for all. Like I can go pick up a CBR 1000 at 18 with a license and call it a day. Oh, wow. I know that you guys with the, you know, the license restrictions and everything like that. We are um, very, very. The beauty yeah. is that this bike can be, you know, they have one of the demo rides right now that's at 11 kilowatts. And then with one click of a button in the software, it goes from 11 kilowatts to 35. And so when it comes to having the same bike that can grow with you as a rider, mm -hmm. it's awesome. So the next criticism that I have has come from, I suppose it's, from the historical development of EV vehicles, as you know, we went through a phase where people were still building these machines yeah. and there were some past cases of batteries exploding. Yeah. So I think a lot of people are a little bit afraid of bringing an electric vehicle into their garage because in their head there's always that risk. Even though modern technology is a lot more advanced than it was first starting off, but for the public who kind of still remember these and feel that maybe their trust has been lost a little bit, they feel like this might be something dangerous to bring into their homes. So how do you feel about that? I mean, listen, we test all the technology that ends up in these is what I'm testing on the racetrack. And that's the whole point is I'm putting in the most extreme environment of running the batteries hotter than they ever should, charging them faster than we ever should, so that no one's ever gonna run them that hard and they can handle that, they can handle being plugged in in a garage. And so I think there's a lot of safety fail safes that people hardly even know exist on these bikes. Mm -hmm. and. In, EV vehicles as a whole, um, any small anomalies are, everything's immediately shut down. It doesn't, you know, live in a gray area. Like, it might work, let's keep, you know, pumping power into it. So, um, the software, they play it very safe. All the fail safes, they play it very, very safe. And so with that, um, there's a lot of peace of mind. And I think we learned that in the motorsport. Uh, so how much have you seen, in the time that you have been racing, how much development have you seen happen in the EV, EV world? Is there any specific pointers that you'd be like, oh yeah, we had this huge progression in this one area? I mean, obviously the weight has come down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing in the motorsport and in the karting as well. Uh, it's really just, we're getting the same amount of battery life with more performance. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what we aim for in the motorsport is if a race is gonna use 50% of the battery life, well, if we can use 50%, but run with 10 more horsepower, that's a benefit. And so yeah. I think that's really what we're seeing is just the battery chemistry is getting better, the software is getting more efficient, and that's really helping us. So one of the biggest issues we've had that I have personally experienced in the UK is that a lot of the machines use different chargers. Yeah. And one of the biggest issues we've faced as British citizens is specifically is that you can pull up to a petrol station and whether that charger will fit your bike or not is a little bit of a gamble. And there are some brands that are bringing out like proprietary connectors. And I feel like a lot of people are a bit afraid to make that switch to an EV because at the moment, the infrastructure just isn't quite there. Yeah, I mean, at least for me living in the States, it's a little bit different. Um, the bonus of the Can-Am bikes is that at the bare minimum, if you have a three-prong wall connector that goes to the correct socket for the bike, you can fit that in a backpack and you at the bare minimum can charge anywhere and get from that 20 to 80%, you know, and a little bit longer than a fast charger, but you'll still be able to do it. And mm -hmm. so the bike can take, you know, just a wall socket plug. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge benefit. And uh, I know that the connectors and stuff are a little bit different overseas compared to what I deal with in the States, uh, but that's just gonna come with time as the infrastructure gets more refined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, last criticism. Electric vehicles are far more expensive than buying a traditional combustion vehicle. So I think upfront cost obviously is a little bit more. Um, I know in the States, they actually just dropped the price of the Pulse and the Origin from 2025 down to about um, just under 10 grand. And I think that makes it a little bit more competitive, um, but you have to think when it comes to maintenance and servicing costs over time, it's gonna take some of that off. So when I charge, I think at home, the equivalent on the power bill is it's $2 for a full charge wow. for a full you know 80 wow. miles. Um, even on the road as well, it's kind of the same, a couple bucks and then there's no engine maintenance, there's no oil changes, there's no nothing. Uh, the chain auto tensions, auto lubricates, and that's just part of it that it makes it a little bit more cost effective in the long run. So uh, as the technology gets better, it's still very niche right now when it comes to bikes, mm -hmm. that price is gonna come down. And so I think 
my goal for them, I think it's uh, keep the range, keep the performance, and bring the price down, and it's going to be great. So if there was anything that you could say to my viewers at home uh, who are watching this and still are feeling a little bit hesitant about the idea of riding an electric yep. bike, what would you say to them? I mean, just give it a shot, you know? I think it's one of those that until you, you can't knock it until you try it. And everyone I've had, whether it's guys that only rode the Surons that are kind of an in-between of they're not really, you know, an electric bicycle, but they're not quite a motorcycle, to guys that ride 1,000cc super sports, mm -hmm. they love it. It's unique, it's fun, it's a blast. So Can-Am is doing a ton of demo rides all over the world, and they have a lot of demo fleets out there. So anytime you get the shot, just give it a go. Amazing. Right, Sprocketeers, that is all we have time for at home. Now, if you guys would like to check out Ellis' social media, I will drop some links down below for you guys to go ahead. I'm sure he'd appreciate a little bit of more attention online. Absolutely. <laughs> now, if you guys do want to see more great content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And in the meantime, ride safe, stay crazy, and I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> this one was completely my fault.